Questions 44 to 47 in the ASA blue paper. Question 44. By equating appropriate torques around the pivot in figure 1, it is found that the magnitude of T in Newton is equal to. So when this question asks us to equate torques, essentially what it's saying is figure out what happens if T clockwise is equal to T anticlockwise. So the torque clockwise is equal to the perpendicular force that is resulting in a clockwise movement of that, in this case, the spine of the man, um, times the distance from the pivot point that the force is exerting from. So in this case, the perpendicular force that is resulting in a clockwise movement is the weight, and the weight is equal to 420 newtons. The distance that it is from the fulcrum, well, it doesn't give us the exact distance, but uh, we do know that the uh, weight of the man's, a uh, weight of the man, sorry, is acting at a distance 0.6 times the full length, or L, um, from that pivot point. So finding the T anti-clockwise is a little bit more dif difficult, um, and that's because we don't have a force that is in a perpendicular form for the anti-clockwise movement. Because T, in this case, is acting at this sort of angle to the man's spine, and is not acting at this pure perpendicular way that the weight was. So we've basically got to figure out the perpendicular component of T, in other words, the vertical component of T, so this part. And to do that, we use trigonometry. So in this case, to figure out the uh, value slash magnitude of that vertical component, we use sine. So sine theta is equal to opposite, which is in this case the T vertical component slash uh, perpendicular component over uh, T in total. So we also know that uh, sine theta, it can be substituted for alpha and that's from the third dot point in the stem. So we get alpha is equal to TV on T and T vertical component is therefore equal to alpha times T. So if we're going to sub in for the respective values, the vertical component of the force or T vertical is equal to alpha T and then we're timesing that by the distance which in this case is 0 0.7 times L. So now we've just got to equate the torques. So we've got 420 times 0 0.6 times L is equal to alpha T times 0 0.7 times L. So we can cancel out the L's and what we get is 420 times 6 on 10 equals to alpha t times 7 on 10. Uh, if we times both sides by 10 and divide both sides by 7, we get 420 times 6 on 7 is equal to alpha t. Therefore, alpha t is equal to uh, 6 d times 6, which is equal to 360 so therefore T is a good 360 on alpha um, and therefore C is the correct answer for question 44. So to answer question 45 you've got to resolve the respective horizontal and vertical components for each of these three forces R, T and W. So let's have a go at resolving the horizontal components first. So the only two uh, two of the three forces which have a horizontal component is R and T because they partially point towards this horizontal plane whilst the weight force has no horizontal component. So therefore we know that the horizontal component of R is equal to the horizontal component of T and to figure out the horizontal component of T we can use trigonometry so um, in this case we'd use cos, so cos theta is equal to T horizontal over, so the adjacent over the hypotenuse which is T. Uh, as again we know from the third dot point in the end of the stem, we know that cos theta is also equivalent to beta, so that leaves us with this. 
So therefore, th is equal to beta t. So, because of this relationship, we can therefore also say that the horizontal component of r is equal to beta t. So let's now resolve the vertical components. The r force and the t force, they both point upwards, whilst the w force points downwards. So therefore, the r vertical plus the vertical component of the t force is equal to w. So from going off the values that we found before, we can say that alpha, uh, we can say that the vertical component is equal to alpha t. So overall we get rv plus alpha t is equal to 420. So therefore rv is equal to 420 minus alpha t. Now that we have these two values, rh and rv, we can figure out the total magnitude of r. So if we just draw out a quick diagram of what R actually looks like, this is uh, the value of R here, the hypotenuse. R vertical component is here and R horizontal is here. To figure out the value of uh, the hypotenuse, when you know the values of the two other side, what you do is you use Pythagoras' theorem. So in this case, our hypotenuse value is R, so R squared is equal to uh, rh squared plus rv squared. So therefore, if you sub in all the values and take the square root of both sides, what you get is beta t squared plus 420 minus alpha t squared. And this most closely resembles the answer for A for question 45, um, that the overall value is equal to B, beta squared t squared plus 420 minus alpha t squared. So if you've managed to reach question 46, you've already done most of the hard work because this question's a bit of a gimme mark. So the only thing that you sort of change for this question from question 44 is that in the clockwise torque direction, we're adding on this extra uh, torque and that is 280 times L. And that's because um, the box is weighs 280 newtons and we're picking it from the end of the lever. Um, so therefore the full length uh, is the distance and the full length is equivalent to L. So if you just sort of go through the maths and working out, you should get something like this. Um, and the correct answer in this case is D, that 760 on alpha is, equal, is the value of T. So question 47 is pretty simple if you understand what's going on. Basically, instead of bending over in the horizontal plane, the man is now standing up completely vertical, and but he's still holding the box. So we've got to figure out the resultant force. The resultant force is basically the force going upwards and it will be equal to the combination of weight forces acting downwards. So that is the weight force of the box plus the weight force of um, the actual man himself. So to figure out therefore the resultant force, we've just got to figure out the weight force which is equal to the weight of the box, which is 280, plus the weight of the man, which is 420. So that is equal to 700 newtons, and therefore C is the correct answer.